Hi everybody! Today let's learn together how to build an MP3 player controlled using NFC tags. The idea for this project came to me when I saw an advertisement for a children's game. It is a story reader. Children can choose the fairy tale to listen by placing the action figure of the hero on the reader. This product obviously only works with proprietary figurines and music files. This is why I wanted to create a completely open source version. In this video I will show you the finished project, its internal components and how to make it. If you want to go directly to the topic of your interest, you can use the chapters under the video. I call my project NFC Music Player. It's a music player of audio files in MP3 format, saved on a micro SD card. By bringing an NFC tag close to the player, the MP3 track associated with it is played. As soon as the tag is removed, playback stops. NFC Music Player has a case made with 3D printing as big as a 10 cm cube. On the front you can see the speaker and two LEDs, while on the back you can find the power switch, the knob to adjust the volume, the slot for the micro SD card that contains the audio tracks, and the USB-C port for charging. The player is in fact portable. It contains a rechargeable battery that offers up to 10 hours of playback. By connecting a USB-C power supply, a common mobile phone power supply is fine, a red LED lights up to indicate that charge is in progress. When charge is complete, a blue LED will light up instead. NFC Music Player works by associating audio tracks on the micro SD card and NFC tags. Creating this association is very simple, thanks to its web interface. After having stored some audio tracks on the micro SD card, insert it into the player and turn it on. From any computer or mobile phone, you can connect to the NFC Music Player Wi-Fi network, whose default password can be changed in the Arduino sketch, as I will show you later. Then open a browser and type the address 192.168.4.1 to access the main interface. First, you can see the association already present. In each line you can read the ID of the NFC tag and the name of the MP3 file that will be played. We can remove an association simply by clicking on the X on the right. To create a new association, bring the NFC tag close. And press Get Tag ID. If the tag is correct in red, its ID is displayed in this field. Now, from the drop-down menu, you can choose the corresponding audio track and click Add. The new association is added to the list, and since the NFC tag is still close to the reader, the track starts playing. Simple, right? If you are curious to know how an FC music player works on a technical level, we will soon open its case. Otherwise, if you want to make one right away, you can skip directly to the third part of this video. Let's open the case together. We immediately see a module hidden under the top panel. 
This is the NFC Tag Reader. The rest of the components that we had already seen from the outside, speaker, switch, are connected to a single board, which also houses the battery. To better understand the main elements of this board, here you can see one without the case. As you can see, to make the project easier to realize, I choose to use ready-made modules whenever possible. Soldered on a PCB I design to put them in communication. Let's start from the brain of an FC music player, this ESP Vroom32 module, which runs the Arduino sketch, coordinates all the other modules and publishes the web interface via Wi-Fi connection. We have already seen the module for reading NFC tags. It is based on the PN532 chip and communicates with the ESP32 chip via SPI bus. The microSD card inserted in this slot is also connected via SPI bus to the ESP32 chip. Once the MP3 file has been read and decoded, the ESP32 chip sends the audio signal to be played to the MAX 98357A chip on this module, which offers a 3W output perfect for driving a 2-3 inch speaker. What makes an FC music player portable is a 1865 all lithium battery, placed in this housing. Thanks to this module, it is possible to recharge the battery and at the same time protect it from over-discharge or short circuit. The battery voltage varies over time. To make it stable and power the different components at 3.3 volts, I use this integrated circuit, 1826S by microchip. I created the schematic and the printed circuit board with KiCad, while the case was designed with Fusion 360. All the files, the Arduino sketch and the documentation are available in a GitHub repository. The link is in the description. I also publish the PCB among my projects on PCBWay. Now that NFC Music Player has no more secret and you know where to find all the material, we can move on to building one player together. First of all, after having downloaded the STL files from Thingiverse, turn on your 3D printer and print the different elements of the case. Printing will take a few hours. In the meantime, you can work on soldering the electronic board that is the heart of NFC music player. After preparing all the necessary components and the printed circuit board, you can start soldering. I recommend starting with the ESP Vroom. And the other modules. Then moving on to passive components such as resistors and capacitors.
the completed board. I have already soldered the wires that will connect the potentiometer and the switch. We can insert the lithium battery into its housing. We must now program the firmware. To do this we will need a USB serial adapter. Pay particular attention to choose one that operates at 3.3 volts to avoid damaging the ASP32 chip. This model in particular has a jumper to choose the working voltage. We connect the adapter to these four pins of the board, remembering to invert the TX and RX signals. That is the RX pin of the adapter must be connected to the TX pin of the board and vice versa. We must start the ASP32 chip in programming mode. To do this we hold down the boot button and press reset. Let's now jump to the Arduino IDE, where I've already loaded the firmware available on GitHub. If you want to change the name of the Wi-Fi network or its password, as I told you at the beginning of the video, you can find them in the nfcmusicplayer.h tab. I have already chosen ESP32 dev module as my board, and the serial port my adapter is connected to. You can leave other parameters as default, except for the partition scheme, where it is important to choose up to megabytes. Now it's time to upload the firmware to the board. We now have to prepare the SD card. After formatting it in FAT32, Copy the mappings.txt file and the web and music folders. You can find everything on GitHub in the SD card section. This can also be the right time to transfer some music tracks into the music folder. Once the 3D printer parts are available, we can start to assemble the project. I'm using the soldering iron to heat up these M3 inserts, and once hot, I'm placing them in the appropriate holes on the base and on the lid. I will use them to secure the printed circuit board and the NFC reader module with four screws. I'm now adding the side walls and the back one. Then I can screw the PCB on the base. Now I'm placing the switch and the potentiometer on the back side. Then I'm connecting them with the wires that I had already prepared to the PCB. The potentiometer can be completed with the knob that was printed previously. I'm now working on the front wall. I solder two wires to the speaker, which I'll then connect to the amplifier module. I cut a circle of this dimension from some speaker fabric. With four screws and four nuts, I'm joining together the plastic support, the fabric, the speaker and the wall. This is the result you're aiming for. I can screw the two speaker wires to the amplifier terminal block and finally position the wall. Last step. Connect the NFC reader to the PCB with jumpers, being careful to respect the, the names of the different signals. 
This NFC music player is ready. All we have to do is close it and connect it to a power supply to charge the battery. If we have follow all the steps correctly, when we turn it on we will see the fixed LED and we'll be able to connect to the Wi-Fi network as explained in the previous chapter. If one of the two LED flashes, we can understand the problem thanks to the troubleshooting guide on GitHub. I hope you found this project interesting and maybe you're planning to build one. If so, I'll be happy to see your creations. For any question, I'll read you in the comments or on GitHub. If you like, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my next project. And as always, have fun!